District 5080, um, President Ad Adriano, and anyone else I've forgotten, Rotarians, friends, all. Firstly, gotta get this line up. Um, I'm giving you the spotlight on service for the Rotary Foundation. November is Rotary Foundation month, just starting in a couple of days' time, and that's the time we encourage you to contribute to the Rotary Foundation, and the uh, enticement is there for you to do so also at the same time as you contribute to your subscriptions. Before I go ahead with that, though, uh, I'd like to follow on from Adriola announcement that today in Idaho is somebody's birthday. But they celebrated it yesterday because they were in Australia. And that's Sandy Patano, and by no coincidence, who's been in Rotary for 30 years. Phenomenal achievement. Congratulations, Sandy. <laughs> for service in Rotary, and those that have been involved in our membership programs would know of Hendo's philanthropic gene. All Rotarians are those people who have the philanthropic gene. And the reason people join Rotary is to do something for others, either by way of service to the community, where we support and participate in local projects, and we've just done Trailblazer by the Sea, Wood Sales, and the list goes on. And if you can't get to do some of those community service, we can contribute to our trust fund um, through David Seaton to help fund the club fund our local projects. And if you wish and are able, you can serve in national and international rotary programs like Group Study Exchange, Fourth Avenue in Motion, and as we now see today, Rotary Friendship Exchange. But if you can't do the, some of these local and community things, we can contribute to the Rotary Foundation and our place can be taken by other Rotarians somewhere else in the world to provide that international service on our behalf and we can still be philanthropic Rotarians. And to sum it up, once upon a time is now.
Thank you very much. On your tables is some literature about contributing to the Rotary Foundation, identical to the email that was sent around to you, and um, I encourage you to support that. Oh, thanks. While Jason's finding that, and it's wonderful where you can get good help these days when, when all else fails. But in introducing, introducing our District 5080 Rotary Friendship Exchange teams, I, I'd like to refer you to the Rotary International theme for this year. And thanks to your president, Adriano Sistanino, you should all have a theme badge. Get it out and have a look at it. It says, Rotary Connects the World. And there's certainly no better program. And if you can't find your badge, have a look on the front cover of your club directory. It's there too. Um, and there's no better program to represent that theme than Rotary Friendship Exchange. And with no further ado, I'd like to introduce, firstly, Steve Verby, the team leader we've been most fortunate to host over the last few days, who will then introduce his team and give the program to you. Thank you, Steve. And thank you very much, Rotarians. It's a pleasure for us to be here from the United States and from Canada. I know that we've got a tight schedule, but first I would like, when each of our rot Rotarians gets up, have a chance to um, thank their hosts, Reg and Kay. It's been wonderful. We really appreciate what has taken place. This has been one of the most important events that we have had. So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce Dave. And Dave, if you would come up. Dave Simpson from Canada. Thank you. Just a, a quick note to all of our three hosts. Uh, it's been a fantastic experience. If you haven't experienced having a person come and stay at your house from another country, um, it's, a, it's a very important experience. We went to um, Maitland, and as we showed pictures of our homes to the Maitland people, they said, why would you want to come here? <laughs> a, few, a few times they said, why would you want to come here? And really, we, learned, we were busy every day, and we learned new things every day. Didn't we group? Yeah, we did. Yes. Um, the, the concept of being in a different place is secondary, though. The really important thing was you folks, the people, meeting other people, learning their culture, meeting their families, that's what uh, really made this trip for us. And it's made it for my wife and I six times. This is our sixth RFE. So we've had a great time and we'll keep coming back as long as the legs keep working. All right, here we go. So this is a Rotary Exchange between our two districts. I just want to um, show you that we have about 250 or 2,500 odd, well, not odd. Some of them are odd, the rest of us are Canadians. Um, we're in 58 clubs. This is, that's the first shot I've taken at the Americans. Is that right? Yes. Okay. All right. So, our district is located across border, and you can see where it is on the screen. We are, our home is about 400 miles from Vancouver, 400 miles from Calgary. How many of you have been in our district? Well, this is different than the last two places we're at, so this will go very quickly. Our district is uh, this area here. It encompasses southeastern British Columbia, northern Idaho, and Eastern Washington State. 
And the biggest community in it is Spokane, Washington. In May, we had our district conference there, and we were lucky enough to have Bill Gates and Barry Rassen talking about polio there. So it was an interesting uh, panel discussion that we had with them. The border goes there, and as you can see, the bigger flag is Canadian. There's an obvious reason for that. Um, the thing that binds us all together really is the Columbia River. We are all in the drainage of the Columbia River, and it is an enormous river. It, it, it separates Oregon State from Washington State on the southern border, but it is a huge river. Not very busy compared to many others. So where I live is in Nelson, British Columbia, in the mountains, and we all live on lakes, pretty well, big lakes. Sandpoint, Idaho is where Steve lives, and our two Coeur d'Alene couples, that's where Coeur d'Alene is. This is where I live, in Nelson on Kootenai Lake. The, the lake is 80 plus miles long, and this is one little arm of it that's 25 miles long. We have seven dams just downstream from this producing power. The, uh, okay, let's do it. so that's my home. I, made this up so I knew that was coming next. <laughs> uh, I'm ever hopeful. Uh, our family, we just celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary so we went on a cruise and uh, so for you who know that I should cut this a bit shorter because the bell goes off or something <laughs> around here, I have cut the uh, cruise slides down from 84 to 24. <laughs> the so they did a man overboard drill on the cruise liner, and this is our kids. So this is our front yard. It's, uh, it's tough to wake up every morning to this. However, it's so tough that it's zero, oh, it was minus five degrees there this morning. And my wife and I go to California. Our, home, our, house, our city was uh, developed or founded in the late 1800s. It was mostly for silver mining copper, silver mining, and a lot of people came up. The basic tra trade was north-south then into the states, and then the border was created and everything went east-west after that. Similar architecture to Victoria, British Columbia, because the same person was the architect. We, are, we have lots of boats. Our main uh, Livelihood nowadays is not mining, it changed to forestry, has since changed from forestry, is now basically a tourist area for skiing. We have a ski hill that's about 25 minutes away, and we have a lot of mountain biking and other outdoor activities. So this is what's happening today there. I just looked at a picture of the ski hill and it's just getting a dump of snow. And we have lake trout and rainbow trout. This one was 33 pounds. I don't know the young fellow, but I, know, I knew that fish. He got away quite a, lot, quite a few times. So in our, my own yard, which is a very small yard, I have a visitor like this every night. He's, uh, well, I'm sure he's there. He leaves something. Uh, usually the plum tree is empty, and he leaves something else. Sorry, you're eating. This is the beginning of uh, Rotary Lakeside Park. So we have two clubs in our area and in conjunction with the other club, we have developed a park on the lakeside. And it has a number of different facilities in it, a covered area, a wharf, and a children's area. And we're moving on to making a multi-generational park later on. That's our big project for the next three years. Be $120,000. Our club really likes to get their hands dirty and uh, we like to be involved with all the projects we do. Many work parties. Our club is very small. Our club is 22 people. The other club in town is about 60 or 70. And we had a, we're having a problem with graffiti in town. I don't, probably don't have that here, but we we uh, decided that we would pay the youth to do some, uh, pay them to do some graffiti. And this hasn't been touched in seven years. And so our last project was a skate park. 
and it tends to be very well used. And so that I'll move on to the next uh, speaker because Steve is moving me on. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, we live in a, I'm assuming you still have the, thank you. We, li we live in Sandpoint, Idaho, which a few years ago was named the most beautiful small town in the United States. A small town is designated as any city with 150,000 people or less. The wonderful spot where Dave lives in Nelson, BC, is Sandpoint's sister city. So we have a lot in common. Big lakes, good people, and a lot of fun. This is um, Sandpoint City Beach. This is about a mile in cir circumference, all white sand. I'm going to defer now to Nick Thompson, our guest here at Rotary today. Uh, Nick, would you say that Sandpoint is one of the most beautiful cities in the United States? Thank you for that acclamation. <laughs> this is Schweitzer Ski Area. It's a mountain outside Sandpoint. It's about 20 minutes. And this is uh, off our dock. We live on the water. And this is a moose that's about 65 feet away from us and came to visit. Uh, and we often get moose because they come down from the mountains. This is a picture that I took of the ice when it formed rather quickly. And the ice was smooth, and there was little sailing ships of ice crystals that came through the top. And I thought you would enjoy seeing a different view than what you get in Adelaide. <laughs> this, is Schweitzer, this is Schweitzer Mountain, uh, the base. Uh, it handles thousands of skiers per hour, so it's a large ski area. And this is the festival at Sandpoint. My wife worked for the festival for 15 years. It brings in thousands of people each year and um, has many well-known artists. I won't even list them because there's too many. This is a, one of Rotary's projects. It is the downtown bathrooms. Excuse me, I've been corrected before. No one takes a bath there. They are actually restrooms or toilets. There was no toilets down in downtown Sandpoint. We put on a, com a campaign for our Rotary Club, and we uh, named it the Two Reasons Campaign to put in bathrooms, number one and number two. <laughs> and this is part of uh, right across the way is our clock tower that we put in, and then there's different sculptures. This is kind of, this is one of our uh, hallmark areas. This is the, the hair and the tortoise, uh, made of bronze that was placed there. And then lastly, and I know we're going to be close on time, this is the band shell that Rotary put in. So I want to thank all of you, especially the hosts. Uh, I would appreciate our time being here. And next up is Sandy Patano. Good afternoon, everyone. And I, too, my husband, Jack Riggs, and I would like to thank you, first of all, for participating in the exchange. We know it's a large endeavor, but, and we really hope you'll take us up and come back and visit all of us, because we have a lot we want to show you, as you've already seen. And as Dave pointed out, there are a beautiful land of lakes and mountains. And as you progress south, you see that where Steve and Tamara live. But when you get to Coeur d'Alene, you know that it too has been voted as one of the most popular places to live <laughs> and small towns in America. It just gets better and better. <laughs> there you go. I had to get up there and even with you two once in a while. This is my husband Jack and I sailing out on the lake. Um, there's a gentleman in our town that donates his sailboat annually for fundraisers. So you can bid on it and we take friends out on it. This is up, us actually up in British Columbia and with what we call a white spirit bear, which is a black bear, but with a, that recessive gene. So that was just a vacation we took together. There's some photos of our family. We have four adult children, and they are all now married, the last being last month, and seven grandchildren. And that's, that looks like a rogue tribe there, and uh, mountain men and women too. But anyway, that's our family. 
Our community is about 150,000 in the region. Our town itself is about 45,000 people. Similar to the others, uh, mining and timber activity was the original base of our economy. Today, much of it is tourism. And you know we'd like to expand into manufacturing and a number of other things as well. Um, our Rotary Club, this is our downtown of Coeur d'Alene. Um, from the top of a, a rooftop building. Most of our buildings are only four stories high, and so everyone can have a good view of the lake. This is what is called the floating golf green at the Coeur d'Alene Golf Course. It's owned by the convention um, and hotel owner, the biggest one in the community. He owns this golf course. It's not far from us, but actually you can come and play on it, hit your ball out there. It's the 14th hole, Jack. And uh, you take a little boat out, collect your ball, and hit it back, and everyone has great fun with it. This is one of our newer parks. Our Rotary Club has participated in it um, as the result of a fundraiser. And you'll see a photo later on called the Harbor House. Our major fundraiser is the Rose Sale. And this year, it was just this last Friday, we sold 14,000, 1,400, excuse me, 1,400 dozen roses, and we raised about $49,000. And so if you don't sell roses, you pay for roses. And I'm sure you all know it, because your club is similar to ours. We're 170 members in our club. And in two years, we'll be celebrating our 100th birthday. Um, this is what I'll call her our Rose Queen. She has spearheaded the Rose Sale for the last decade and done a marvelous job. She's always challenging us to sell more and do more. And um, one of the awards we give, we give a like a Rose Bowl cup full of roses. But if your team is in last place, you're fortunate enough to take home the lucky toilet seat. <laughs> and... Um, the other major fundraiser that we have during the year is called Corda Irish, and it's a St. Patrick's Day party because we know that everyone in the community, whether you're Irish or not, likes to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So we just host a big party, and actually it's proven to be quite successful, so we continue to hold it. And yes, this one is actually a family member and friends, so you can tell that everyone's having a good time, and you don't have to be a Rotarian to attend. And with our proceeds, we've sponsored things in the community like the Rotary Lakeside Bandshell. That was one of our first large projects in the community that faces the lakes. This is a community library that was built eight years ago, and our club put $100,000 into that project. So we weren't the only ones. We partnered with other, others in the community. And this is the Harbor House that I mentioned. So it's a restroom and restaurant facility right on the edge of the lake at the new park. And the last one that I want to show, especially because it has a place near and dear to my husband's and my heart, is the Salvation Army Croc Center. And our community was um, lucky enough, I would say, to land what was a competitive project, uh, if you're familiar with McDonald's restaurants. Ray and Joan Croc, and he was, they'll say he's the founder of McDonald's. His widow, Joan, left over a billion dollars to the Salvation Army. And in the United States, across the states, they um, established, I think, 28, there might be 26 that have been built, croc centers. And they were really dream centers. They challenged us all to dream of what your community needed. And initially, we were told we weren't dreaming big enough. And so we were fortunate to land a $34 million grant to build the facility with a matching endowment of $34 million. And it's a place where people can go spiritually, but a place where people can go to recreate and exercise, where the young and old all go to participate. And we will be forever grateful for the Salvation Army's interest in our community. So that's our bit. And these are some of our Rotary friends and family. Just We were at a friend's wedding, and we all have just a great time. One more thing I want to do is just I can't begin to thank you all enough. Your hospitality has been beyond our imagination. I should say we came with low or no expectations, but you've hit the ceiling. And in each club, Brian 
and um, Heather hosted four of us in their home, Wheatley's. Jack and Ann hosted us at their house. Other members have driven us, had us over for dinner. You've hosted us at Cricket, your club did. And all of the things that you have done may have made our trip quite magical. We will never forget it, but we really hope to return that hospitality to each and every one of you that hopes to come back to Coeur d'Alene. So, or North Idaho in District 5080. So now I'd like to introduce Pat Whalen. Sandy's a tough act to follow, so thank you, Sandy. Uh, what she neglected to mention about the Croc Center was that Jack and Sandy were instrumental in leading that charge and lead, led our Rotary Club in, in, in um, participating in that project. Rotary connects the world indeed. Um, I'm just here to thank you for your, for your tremendous hospitality, to invite you to come visit us in 5080. You've set the bar for hospitality pretty darn high, uh, but we'll do our best to uh, meet it. Um, just have a couple of pictures. These are Rotarians at a fundraiser. Um, you can't see it very well, but in the back is a, uh, what we call the Voss of Mystery. Years ago, in starting our international auction, we sent $100 out to dozens of different clubs around the world, just blind to them, sent them 100 bucks and said, send us something for our auction. And every single club responded. We unfortunately um, lost some of the tags on the items, so nobody knew what this thing was or where it came from. Nobody bid on it the first year, uh, so we brought it back and bid it again the, the following years, and at, to date it's raised well over $50,000. So you buy the Voss of Mystery, you get it for a year, you bring it by, back. So, um, One of our major projects, one of the major things we've supported over the years is the Guatemalan Book Project. It's one of Rotary International's larger projects. Many, many clubs participate. This is a group of our club down at, at, in Guatemala uh, visiting that project. Um, tremendous success in buying books and distributing to the uh, uh, people of Guatemala. Um, and uh, it's a project that we hope to continue to support for years to come. We're a very um, staid and, and reserved bunch, as you can see. These are all past presidents of the club. And uh, again, that's part of a rose sale uh, uh, fundraiser. So this is um, um, Laura and I uh, with uh, um, visiting Rotarians from Ghana um, and uh, us, us in the woods. So I think I'm running out of slides, but that's, that's Laura in Vietnam. We were in Vietnam recently. And there's Jack and Sandy and, and Laura in Vietnam at, at Raffles. So anyway, in conclusion, I'd just like to say thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys have been fabulous. Um, please um, send a team to us. We will take care of them with the, every bit of uh, energy that we can uh, that to try to match the energy you've shown us. Thank you. <laughs>